And right now, because we put that CGH in it, I can actually... almost null out the fringes. But here the question comes in. Still, we are seeing some residuals. This is not a perfectly null fringes. We see some power, maybe the focus, or some commas. But of course, the size of the aberration is extremely small compared to the previous spherical aberrations. So actually, this one shows we really cancelled out the huge amount of the spherical aberrations by using that simple CGH. The residual, what we are seeing right now, is comes from the imperfection of many things. For instance, those two lenses may not be aligned because this is a, a simple, uh, simple experimental setup. And this is why Sometimes we can use the CGHs in order to align systems. So the primary use of the CGH is of course in order to test some systems. You can carefully align the systems until you see a null fringes. So this is another great use of CGH. You can use the CGH in order to align some systems. Let's see what happens if we choose a wrong diffraction orders. So right now, I am interfering the reference beam with the plus first order, the plus first diffraction order from the CGH. But actually, I can choose zero order from the CGH. So right now, I am moving. So basically, I adjusted the folding mirror right behind the CGH so that I can choose different orders, can pass through the pinhole. Right now, the zero order from the CGH is passing through the pinhole so that it interferes with the reference beam. And as you expect, we are seeing that huge spherical aberrations from the lens system. In this case, the CGH does not do anything on the beam. So it's just identical to the case where the CGH was not in the system. And then I am keep moving the folding mirror so that we choose the negative first order from the CGH. And now, it's a little bit hard to see, but there are a lot more spherical aberration right now. So right now, we are seeing the interferogram between the minus first order from the CGH and the reference beam. And the spherical aberration is actually doubled now. For example, if the lens system itself had a full waves spherical aberration. Right now, we are seeing a eight waves spherical aberrations. The reason is because we choose a negative first order, which is the wrong order from the CGH. So the CGH is creating a plus four waves spherical aberrations, and it is added to the spherical aberration from the two lenses. So in total, we have eight waves spherical aberrations. So this is why it is so important to choose a right order when you use a CGH for testing. If you use, choose a wrong sign of orders, then you actually double the aberrations. So finally, I will explain about the pinhole. So as I ex explained, this pinhole here is here in order to select or choose the desired diffraction order. As you see, there are many spots from the diffraction orders from the CGH. And by moving 
by tip tilting the mirror behind the CGH, you can actually let different orders can pass through that pinhole. This is how I was able to choose different orders. So only chosen order pass through that pinhole and can interfere with the reference beam. And then I will show you what happened if there was no such a pinhole here. So right now I am actually open up that pinhole. So basically there is no pinhole at all. And then as you see here, you can see many circles. So all the different orders are arriving at this plane and interfering with the reference plane reference beam so plus first order zero order and minus first and there should be plus third minus third fourth minus fourth and so forth and in this way you cannot distinguish between orders so that was why it is important to put a pinhole there so that you can actually block undesired orders and let the desired order can go through and interfere with the reference beam. So this is the setup, the mark and interferometer. You have the Heaney laser source, microscope objective, and the spatial filter, and the first collimation lens, and there is a aperture in order to clip the beam size, and the first beam splitter comes in. The beams divided into two passes, and this pass is the testing beam pass so there is a folding flat mirror there and this is the mount for the CGH right now the CGH is mounted followed by the two lenses on the testing and here are the second beam splitter the reference beam it's simply after pass through that first beam splitter, propagate up until the another folding mirror, the folding flat mirror here, and there is a neutral density filter, which just dims the beam intensity and comes to the second beam splitter, and they are meeting here together. In one way, there is a focusing or imaging lens here and gives us the spot diagram of those beams. And the other way, there is a, another focusing lens. And at the focal plane, you put a pinhole in order to select desired diffraction orders only. And the selected diffraction order and the reference beam propagates up until this screen and provide us a interferogram, the interference pattern. And this pinhole plane and the spot diagram plane are the conservate image planes. was Dale Kim from the College of Optical Sciences, University of Arizona, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.